on the Ocho of Decembero, which is December 8th in Latin, Paul from Paul's Hardware and myself will be doing our annual charity live stream. Super exciting, it's for the children! And like last year, we're gonna be giving away two gaming PCs on stream to two random people who are in chat. It's gonna be super nuts. And I thought, what a great opportunity for me to get rid of the Walmart overpowered gaming PC that I purchased not so long ago and recently did a video on, which you should check out if you haven't yet. And then I think to myself, what a wonderful world. No, that's not it. And then I thought, no, I can't do that. There's too many shortcomings and various limitations of this rig to really make it a compelling giveaway prize. And I want it to be good, you know, for the children. So today I'm gonna walk you through the steps I took to improve, upgrade, and even modify the system to be a thousand times better than it was the day I took it out of the box. For the children! The Thermaltake A500 Aluminum TG Mid-Tower features a sleek aluminum front panel and two 4mm tempered glass panels for breathtaking views. Enjoy 420 and 360 rad support at the front and top respectively, and breeze through installation with a dismantleable modular design. Step up your case game with the A500 Aluminum TG and click on the link below for more info. Now, quick disclaimer, this is not an episode of Pimp My Rig. All right, we don't care. I don't care how the system looks. I wasn't trying to go for aesthetics. It would have been really easy for me to go in here, make everything all matchy-matchy, throw in some sleeve cables and stuff like that. But that's not what we're after. We're trying to make the rig way more functional, and we're also trying to make it way more thermally sound due to that super air-restrictive front panel, which, as you can see, we've actually widened the gap quite a bit, and I'll show you how we did that later on. But a quick refresher of the original specs here. This is Walmart's overpowered DTW1 model, featuring a Core i7-8700, a Gigabyte H310M S2 motherboard, 16 gigs of ADATA DDR4-2400 speed memory, a Gigabyte WinForce OC GTX 1070, a 256 gig ADATA SSD, two terabyte Toshiba hard drive, and a 550 watt Great Wall power supply. With that said, the first rule of order was to gut the system entirely and swap out the motherboard because the H310 chipset, while it's cheap for supporting 8th gen CPUs, is just super basic and very, very limited. For instance, you only get one DIMM per channel, which blows any chance of you running dual channel memory. You also have a significantly cut down number of PCIe and high speed IO lanes. You have fewer USB ports, not to mention you have zero support for USB 3.1 Gen 2, and the list kind of goes on. Enter the MSI B360 Gaming Pro Carbon. The B360 chipset pretty much remedies all of the H310 limitations I just rattled off. Plus, this board gets M.2 support and a second full-size PCIe by 16 slot. Sure, you still can't overclock if you were to drop a K-SKU CPU in here down the line, but you get a lot more connectivity, a far superior rear I.O., and a much higher quality board overall. Now, since we're just upgrading certain things, there are a lot of parts that I kept, such as the 8700 CPU, the CPU cooler, and the single stick of 16 gigabyte DDR4 RAM. I'm keeping the RAM single channel for now, because it's an easy upgrade down the line for whoever wins this thing. And also, single channel doesn't really hurt your gaming performance all that much. The CPU cooler, while well, let's face it, you're basic. It's actually more than capable of handling the 8700's temperatures, especially with our front panel mod, which we'll touch on in a moment. Moving on though, you bet your bottom dollar I swapped out that great wall power supply. It was arguably the weakest link of the entire system, and there's absolutely no way I'm gonna ship that out to a fan. Happily taking its place is a 520 watt Seasonic S12 II, which is not modular, it kinda sucks, but it is 80 plus gold certified and received an amazing review on Johnny Guru. Plus I got it on Newegg while it was on sale for Black Friday for just 39 bucks. It was actually the only thing I bought on Black Friday and I bought it for you. Well, one of you, the rest of you get nothing. Overall, the Seasonic power supply is more reliable, more power efficient, and gives me the peace of mind that my system will not set my house ablaze. Now, there is really no point in swapping out the storage drives. I think the SSD and the mechanical drive that we have in here, while they are fairly basic, are totally fine for most users' needs. And the GTX 1070, like I keep saying, is one of the strongest parts in the original system, so we're keeping that too. Which brings us to the mods. Now, there are three things that are so wrong with this case that I felt modifications were necessary. First, no USB 3.0 on the front panel. None. You gotta have USB 3 on the front, man. It's 2018, what are you doing? So brace yourself for my super ghetto solution. I am not a professional modder, in case you didn't know. I took a 20 pin USB 3.0 adapter to type A, and then I ran from that type A connection, a USB 3.0 extension cable, and with the front panel of the case removed, I ran the end of that cable to the front of the case and cinched it down with some zip ties and adhesive Velcro, which actually worked out pretty well. It seems very secure. Now the solution actually works like a charm, but it does take up the only USB 3 header on our motherboard, which meant I had to remove the PCI card 
card, which had a USB 3.0 Type-C port coming out the back. It's totally fine with me though, because our new motherboard has USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C already built in. Take that. The second big issue with this case is that there's no dust filtration at the front. So I thought this is a quick and easy fix. I went on Amazon, I bought a 280 millimeter magnetic dust filter, which actually fit over our three 120 millimeter fans very nicely. I had to make a little cut on the corner of the dust filter though, to make room for our new front panel USB 3 port. But then I quickly realized after turning the system on that the dust filter was too close to the fan blades and the suction force of the fans was actually drawing the dust filter up against the fan blades and it was making this awful rubbing noise. It was terrible. Not knowing how to proceed, I kind of just tossed the dust filter aside and gave up. So still no front dust filter, which is fine, totally fine. I'm sure you guys have a million ideas of how I could have made that work in the comments. But that brings us to the third and final big no-no of this case, which is the air restrictive front panel. Steve from Gamers Nexus actually did a thermal test in this exact same case and found a 30 degree difference by simply removing the front panel. I'll put a link to his video in the description if you want to check it out. But what makes this front panel out of the box so ridiculously air constrictive is that it's only giving about four or five millimeters of space between the fans and the front panel itself. These these fans just don't have the static pressure to intake any air from that limited gap. To make matters worse, the tempered glass side panel actually extends past the frame of the case, which completely cuts off any ventilation on this left side of the chassis. The way the front panel mounts to the chassis is actually pretty simple. It's got four screws, one, two, three, four, two on either side that mount from the inside of the case, and they pretty much just screw into the mounting holes on the front panel itself. Now the screws themselves are really, really short, and that's why there's such a short distance between. So I basically ditched those screws entirely, bought longer three and a quarter inch screws, found a couple nylon washers and spacers lying around. And with those simple elements, I was able to get the front panel a full three quarters of an inch away from the fans, which brings in a lot more air and keeps the CPU much cooler. Now you'll be very mad at me to know that I didn't do any thermal testing of the original system, but with the new setup that we have here, we're actually seeing some really good CPU temperatures, only hitting 64 C on the package at its hottest. And that was after 15 minutes of GTA 5 at 1440p. The GPU is doing great also hitting 61 C at its hottest under that same load. Based on Steve's findings, I would have to assume that the thermal situation here is infinitely better than it would have been right out of the box. So in that sense, mission complete. You know, I feel like I've spent a lot of time with this rig. Ever since I brought him into this world, I've decided it's a him. And you know, I feel like as a proud PC parent, I've helped him grow and become the rig that he is today. And as a proud PC parent, I can, I can confidently say that he is ready to fly the coop. And maybe one day he'll meet a nice admin who makes him feel special, who uh, who he'll fall in love with, which won't happen because he's a computer. But anyway, if you would like to win this computer, we're doing a live stream for charity on December 8th. So stay tuned for more information on that. You can follow me on Twitter at BitwitKyle. Apart from that, guys, let me know what you think of the various changes that I've made to this system. I know a lot of these mods and stuff are super ghetto fabulous, but hey, I would much rather have the system in its current state than the way it was. So you guys let me know if you agree. Toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Have a good one, guys. I will see you in the next video.